yeah, about 10.53. So a hundredth of a millimeter in it, according to my really cheap calipers. Now that's pretty bang on. I mean, that's as straight as straight can be. What's happening everyone? Welcome back to the workshop. I hope you're all doing well. Now in this video I'm going to be putting a new blade in my brand new bandsaw and setting it up for the first time. So I said I would share that with you guys. Maybe you will get some good information from this video. So I'll take you through how to set up a bandsaw. We'll talk a little bit about blade selection for any of you guys who are new to the whole bandsaw thing. And then we'll jump in then we will cut a little test piece just to make sure that our setup is correct at the end. So without further ado, let's jump in and do it. Okay, so this is my new bandsaw. It's an Axminster Trade AT3327B. Now in a previous video, I unboxed and assembled this one and I said I would keep the setup for a separate video because it's worth doing a video all on its own. Now, it's a brand new bandsaw, comes with a blade in it. Generally, the blades that come with bandsaws are not very good. So I'm gonna be changing out this blade and then doing a full setup. So the very first thing we wanna do is put in our new blade, change our blade, whether it's a new or old bandsaw, if you're setting it up and you're changing the blade, that's the very first place you wanna start. The blade does not move. All, the only adjustment we can make to the blade is the tension on the blade. We can't twist it, we can't tilt it, we can't do anything like that to it. So everything gets referenced off the blade. So that's the very first place we wanna start is change the blade. Now, let's talk a little bit about blade selection before we jump in and do that. Okay, so very quickly, let's go through blade selection. There's three measurements that we're concerned with. Overall blade length, blade width, and the TPI. Now, blade width and TPI, I'll show you in a second and why they are important. But overall blade length, that's the easiest one to start with. So every machine will have a blade length that it's rated for, and that's just the length of the blade that goes around both tires, and that blade, when that blade is under tension, that's the length of the blade that's unique to your machine. So that's the very first thing you want to look at when buying a blade for your machine. What length of blade can that machine hold under tension around its two wheels? And it's usually on the plate on the machine, or in the uh, instruction booklet for your particular machine or you'll find it online by googling it if it's not anywhere on the machine. So that's the very first thing you want to look at. What blade length do I need for my machine? Now let's talk about blade width and the TPI. Okay, so we're zoomed in on the blade that comes with the machine just to illustrate the next two measurements. So we want to talk about blade width and TPI. Now, my blade length is in metric, so it's in millimeters, but we always talk about the TPI, which is T per inch, and the width in Imperial R in inches. Don't ask me why we do that, that's just what we do. Uh, we're mixing our measurements here. So this particular blade, as you can see, if I measure the width of it, is a half inch blade. And if I talk about TPI, and that is T per inch, so you can see the one inch mark here, there are six teeth within that measurement there. So it's a six TPI blade. So half inch, by six TPI, that's what this particular blade is. Now let's talk about why those measurements are important. Okay, so now that we've pointed out what TPI and blade width actually represents, why are we worried about these two things? Well, first off, your machine will have a kind of maximum blade width that you can use with your machine, so you'll have to know that when selecting the blade that you're going to be using with your machine. So smaller machines, obviously smaller blade widths, larger machines can get up to larger blade widths. Now, why is it important that we know these two measurements? Well, it depends depends what you're going to be doing with your bandsaw. So you gotta ask yourself, what's the primary use of my bandsaw? Do I wanna do loads of tight curves, cut lots of shapes, or am I gonna do lots of resawing and lots of straight cuts, or am I gonna be somewhere in between? And I'd say 90% of us are gonna be somewhere in between. We wanna do some curves, we also wanna do some resawing. That's gonna affect the type of blade you select. So the higher the TPI or the more teeth per inch, the finer the cut you get, the thinner the material you can actually work on. So if you have a really high TPI, say, six or above, maybe eight, 10, 12 TPI, you can even get higher than that. That's really good for doing uh, manufactured materials such as plywoods, uh, MDFs and acrylics, really thin stuff. If you wanna resaw boards, you want a low TPI, maybe four, even three TPI, so that you have fewer T per inch, you have larger gullets, so you can clear that material when you're resawing a large board. Very same as your cross-cut saw, and your rip saw, if you look at the teeth pattern on them, a rip saw will have much larger gullets so it can clear the material and making ripping boards a lot easier. Well, it's the same with 
bandsaw blades. Now, also the width of the blade is important for what I've just said. A really narrow blade, say a quarter inch blade, is really good for doing those tight curves, whereas a really wide blade, up to say an inch, is great for doing perfectly straight cuts. So that's what you got at the side. What am I gonna get? What am I gonna use my bandsaw for? Somewhere in between, say a half inch, six TPI blade. That's a really good general purpose blade. You'll be able to do some curve work and you'll be able to do some resawing of boards. It's not gonna be great at either, but it will do both pretty well. So that's kind of it. That's why we wanna select the blades that we wanna select. That's why those measurements are important. So let's rock on now and change this blade. Okay, so I have two blades here. We're gonna put on one of these now. So I have a half inch six TPI blade. That's a good general purpose blade, as I've just said to you guys. So you can do some curve cutting and you can also do some ripping with that. I also have a half inch four TPI blade. So this is gonna be slightly better at doing those rip cuts because it has uh, much more distance between the teeth, larger gullets, it can clear the material, stop you getting caught up and burning that material when you're cutting. So that's what I'm gonna be putting on is this four TPI blade. I wanted to resaw some boards for making small kind of boxes and stuff like that. So that's what I'm gonna be using my blend saw for the next little while for. So the four TPI blade is what we're going to be putting on. So let's do it. Okay, first thing we wanna do is take the old blade off. Now the machine is unplugged, we're good and safe. And this particular machine has a tension lever on the back. So all I gotta do is put that up out there. That's all the tension now relieved off the blade. Um, and it has a fine adjuster here. I'll show you that now when I'm putting the blade back on. So this blade is ready to pull out. Let's get on and do it. Okay, first thing I wanna do is take out the insert. And you can see that the slot in this table is at 90 degrees to the blade. My last bandsaw, the slot was cut to the front, which meant I had to take the fence out of the way in order to get the blade out, which is a bit of a nuisance. This one we don't, we just gotta turn the blade at 90 degrees. Now, I just gotta pull out this pin here that keeps both sides of the table perfectly aligned. We get them out of the way and let's open it up. Okay, just very quickly, we'll slacken off the guide bearings, just pull them out away from the blade, both top and bottom, and then it's ready to come out. Okay, let's get our blade out. We have the tension released off the blade. We have our guide rollers out of the way, and now it's just a case of work it out. So we gotta work it out through the slot on this side, work it out past our fence. I'm just gonna move the fence in a little bit. Take it out through there. Then I just gotta turn this blade 90 degrees, a little bit of a faff here and then it just comes straight out through the slot, just like that. Nice and simple, not much to it. Okay, so now that we have our blade out, we wanna coil this up. Now this can be a little bit fiddly and a little bit tricky to get right, but there's not really too much to it. Um, you might wanna wear gloves for this. Remember that blade can be quite sharp and it can dig into your hand. So just be careful when you're doing this. If you wanna wear gloves, put them on. So it's not too difficult. We just wanna twist the blade in opposite directions. So just turn one hand upside down and uh, twist this one forward whilst twisting this one back the way. Now, it should just coil itself up just like that. Now that can be a little bit tricky and takes a little bit of practice. But remember, turn one hand upside down, twist it forward and twist the other hand back and it should come together in a nice loop like that. And if you need to wear gloves, wear gloves and be careful you don't cut the hands off yourself. Okay, so we have our new blade here. This is our Axe Caliber blade. Now this one is quite a bit sharper than the one that just came off. So I have just two pieces of cloth here. And we just wanna uncoil this. So we wanna uncoil it in a similar fashion than what we coiled it up now. I've seen some people just throw these on the floor and run off in terror, but you risk damaging your blade at that. And there's no real reason to be afraid of these. So just take out a loop, just like this, nice and easy. Let it uncoil. You have control of it the whole way. You don't have to let this spring. Just let it come out, turn it around, nice and gently, just like that. No big deal, no panic, you're in control. Um, just be very careful. If, like I said, wear gloves if you want. I have this caught with two kind of uh, cloths now. They're quite thick and this blade is very sharp, so just be careful. And when you do take it out, just make sure the blade is not inside out. So when you have the left-hand side of your blade here, make sure those teeth are pointing down the way and not up the way, otherwise the blade is inside out and you just have to flip it back around and uh, when you put on your bandsaw, the teeth will be going up rather than down. So you need teeth to be going down, that's all, nice and simple. Okay, so when it comes to putting the blade back in, then there's not much to it. Let's just put it back in the exact same way that it came off. Get it in there, turn it at 90 degrees. Make sure it's not getting caught up or damaged anyway. A Little bit of a faff, tuck it in the slot on the guide and tuck it in the slot on the back of your bandsaw. Let it sit on the top tire or wheel and then just get it on the bottom one. Just like that, a little bit of a faff, but not too bad. Okay, 
lock our tension arm back in position. Let's go around the front. Okay, so let's tension up this blade. Now I have an adjuster here after I lock in the tension arm. Now, just looking at this blade, this is the, probably the best place to check it from. Um, that's a little bit on the loose side, so I want about five mil of deflection and not pushing too hard. Now this is not an exact science, this is something you're gonna have to develop a feel for. So I'm gonna move this dial down a bit. Now it's marked one to 10 here, although they don't represent anything. Uh, one to 10 Titan it says, don't ask me what that represents. But I suppose when you get used to using the machine and different with blades, you'll know what number to set those blades for. So if I'm just gonna wind this down, you'll see that dial start to come down. We'll wind it down as far as one and then we'll check. Now there's a nice bit of tension in that blade. I've got five millimeters of deflection. I'm pretty happy with that. So a good rule of thumb is watch the knuckle on your finger. If you have to push in so hard like that, this whole knuckle is gone white. That's too much. Now that's about 10 mil of deflection. I'm after putting in there, about centimeter deflection, a little under half an inch. Uh, you want to be about a quarter of an inch, somewhere around five mil, just pushing with your finger. There's about five mil of deflection and my finger is not doing this going white. So if your knuckle is going white, you're pushing too hard. I know it's not an exact science. This is not an exact measurement. I wish I could give you guys an exact measurement, but it's a feel thing. About a quarter inch or five mil of deflection without having to force in your finger like that. You'll get a feel for it. Um, it's just something, like I said, you do develop an actual feel for. So that's our blade tensioned up. Now we need to make, it, make sure it's running right on our tire. Let's do that. Okay, so on the back of your bandsaw, all bandsaws will have this, they'll have a adjustment knob here for tilting the wheel back and forward. And that's important because we want the blade running in the center of the wheel and this will help us get it there. So let's have a look at our wheel and this is what I'll be adjusting, but it won't be in shot. Okay, so my particular bandsaw has a window here that actually look in at my wheel and see my blade on my wheel. So if it doesn't have that, you can just look in the side here. So you just wanna get your finger in the spoke and just roll this guy around and see how that blade is tracking. Now this one is actually pretty good. It's actually running dead center, which is exactly where I want it to be. So I don't have any adjustment to make there, thankfully. But if it starts tracking towards the front, you're gonna to have to tilt the wheel. Or if it starts tracking towards the back, you'll also have to tilt that wheel until you get it running in the center. Again, it's a pretty easy, easy adjustment to make. It's either screw it in or screw it out. And uh, tilting the wheel will make the blade run towards the back or the front or stay in the middle. And that's tracking pretty good. I like my blades right in the middle of the bandsaw uh, tire and uh, I'll explain why. Okay, so the blade running on the tire of the wheel. Now there's two schools of thought here. I've heard multiple guys talk about this and explain it in two different ways. Some guys will say, keep the center of your blade running on the center of that wheel tracking there. That's where I keep it. And I've heard different guys say, keep the gullet of the blade on the center of the wheel, which means the blade will be slightly towards the back of the wheel. Now, they say that because there's a camber, there's a slight camber on this wheel and the blade teeth aren't actually supported or under tension is what the claim is. That's why you wanna keep the gullet to the center of the wheel so that the blade teeth are actually on that wheel. Now, I don't really agree with that. I've heard some guys argue this case. The blade, once it gets down here, is no longer on the wheel. The blade is under tension when the whole blade is under tension. I believe that the teeth are under tension also. But there's nothing on the blade down here. Once it's tracking through on the center of that wheel, it doesn't matter whether the teeth are to the front or to the back. Once it's tracking through and it's under the correct tension, the wheel is not having any effect on the blade or the teeth on the actual cutting part that's working down here other than keeping tension in the blade. And when the blade is under tension, the teeth are also under tension because they're part of the blade. And like I say, the wheel is not actually touching the teeth where they're doing the cutting. So it doesn't really make sense to me. Maybe Maybe I'm missing something in that particular setup. So like I said, there's two schools is taught. Either keep your blade then set dead center of the wheel, which is what I do, and I've had no issues, or keep the gullets dead center of the wheel, thus keeping the teeth under more tension. It doesn't make sense to me because the teeth, like I said, down here are not actually on the wheel and they're the teeth that are doing the cutting. So I'll leave it up to you guys. Do some research on it, but uh, I get great results just leaving my blade run dead center of the wheel. And it means I can use wider blades as well and are not running off the back of my wheel that way. So let's move on. Okay, so we can close up our bandsaw now, lock everything back in place. That's done. Pop back in our insert and lock our table so that everything is flush. Okay, now let's get setting up our guide rollers.
Okay, let's look at our guide bearings. Now we have two side roller bearings and we also have a trust bearing to the back and we have a carriage that moves in and out contain, um, holding those bearings and we also can move the trust bearing in and out independently of these two. So we want our two guide rollers out just behind the back of our gullet. We don't want this out on the teeth itself, risking damaging the blade and chewing up our rollers. So we want to keep it in just behind the gullet there. So I'm gonna lock that carriage down now. So they are the correct distance out. Now, our trust bearing, we don't want any of our bearings actually touching the blade. So what we do is I bring that out until it hits the blade and I just back it off a touch. I'm only backing it off about a half a mil away from that blade. And that just supports the blade when the blade comes under tension and gets forced back that will support that blade. Now, like I said, when the blade is running under normal conditions, we do not want it touching any of our guide rollers. So put it out till it makes contact, pull it back about a centimeter. And we are a millimeter, I should say, not a centimeter, a millimeter, and that should be good. And let's adjust this from the front so you guys can see it. Okay, so looking at our two guide bearings there, you can see they are running off center. So they have a kind of a, an elliptical um, orbit so it gets close to the blade and further away from the blade. Now, just like our trust bearing, we want to bring these guys down until they're touching the blade and just back them off so that we have a gap there. Again, bring that guy in. He's just touched the blade there. I wanna bring him, back him off about that much. That should be good. We're about a millimeter off the blade and they have two locking screws either side that will lock those guys down now so they cannot move. And we just cinch them down. Just like that, that's them locked in place. Now, we do the same underneath to the blade. We wanna set up the truss bearing and the two roller bearings. Okay, so underneath we have the exact same setup. We have two roller bearings either side of the blade. We have a trust bearing up here and it's more or less the exact same thing. So this screw here allows me to move, loosen it up and move my two truss bearings in and out. So I just catch this here, you'll see that. So you can see I can move them in now. So I wanna position them just behind the gullet again and lock that down. Then I have my truss bearing, which is on an adjustment knob here. So again, just touching the blade and then just back it off a touch and then I can lock it down with this screw here. Then I'm gonna set the two of these to the exact same distance that I set the ones above. So, and that's the blade sorted. Okay, so that's our guide bearings all set up now. So as above, so below. And like I said, just roll them up till they're touching the blade and back them off just, just a touch, a mil or less, and you should be good. And you'll have to adjust that truss bearing in and out according to the width of the blade that you're using. So that's all well, that's set up now. And like I said at the start of the video, we don't move the blade, so the blade can't be twisted and it can't be tilted. So we're referencing everything off the blade. Now, we need to set up our table and our fence. Let's do that now. Okay, so next we want to check is that we're perfectly square to our table. So with my engineer square, I'm just going to run that in against the blade. That looks pretty good. Now, make sure your insert is in all the way and it's not lifting or lowering that square at all. So keep the square pressed on the table and just check for any light gaps between the blade and the square. Try not to push against the blade as well because you can deflect it. So you just want to rest against it, not putting any pressure on that blade whatsoever and ensuring that we're square. That looks absolutely spot on to me, so I'm happy with that. Now, if it wasn't, there's a couple of adjustments you can make under the table, which I'll show you guys now. Okay, so here's the underneath of the table. You can see I'm actually set to zero degrees. Now, if you're at zero degrees and it's not square, get it square, then you can loosen this screw and you can push this guy backwards or forwards till it points exactly to zero. And then with this bolt here, you wanna screw that against your table. This is your zero stop here. So when you drop your table onto this, you're always guaranteed to be back at zero degrees. Um, so it won't matter if this guy gets deflected or something, but you wanna set that anyway, so you have a really good indication. But always check with that square and check regularly because things do get out of square on machines, so it's important to check. Okay, onto the fence. Okay, so next thing I wanna do is make sure that our fence is exactly parallel to that blade. And I'm gonna use this, little tool here, it's the UJK bandsaw body. It's a very handy tool for doing this. So I'll give you a quick close up of this and then we'll use that to set up our fence. Okay, very quickly, here is the UJK bandsaw body. Now there's a lot of things you can do with this. I won't cover them all, um, including making circles and stuff like that with all the holes that are in it. But for setting up your bandsaw, it's a nice straight edge. You have some measurements up here you can use and you also have these two rear earth magnets with a kind of a slot 
uh, cut in here that your blade can sit into and you have a deeper slot here that allows the blade teeth to sit into. So your blade teeth will have an offset in them like this. And if that was all flat, it would keep the blade slightly pressed off. So you leave your teeth sitting here, the rear art magnets will catch the blade and we can use this for squaring up our fence. So let's do that now. Okay, so if I attach the bandsaw body onto the two rear art magnets, move it forward so that the blade teeth are inside in that little offset right there. So it's not deflecting my um, bandsaw body. Now that bandsaw body is locked on and it's running parallel to that blade. So this gives me a, a longer parallel edge that I can eye this fence off. So if I run my fence up, just till it makes contact with the bandsaw body, again, I don't want to deflect this. Just like that. Okay, we're pretty good if I lock that down now and see where I am. Okay, so according to that, I am pretty good there. I don't see any gaps along the uh, bandsaw body. So that's helping me, like I said, align that up. So I'm just gonna bring it up to that. And I'll leave it right there, lock it down. Okay, actually, I'm slightly wider at the back then I am at the front. It's just the barest little thing. So we're gonna adjust that there now. Let's do that. Okay, it's a little hard to catch this on camera, but I've just backed the fence off the bandsaw body so I can see a clear gap of a couple of mil all the way along there. I've loosened off the four Allen bolts here. And by the way, the one um, Allen key does every single Allen bolt on this bandsaw, which is handy. And now I have the ability to tilt the fence. So what I'm just gonna do is I'm just gonna Line it up so that gap is exactly even all the way along that bandsaw buddy. And that looks pretty perfect by eye to me. So I'm gonna hold it right there and lock this fence back down. Just keep checking as I go. Now I know that my fence is running perfectly parallel to my blade. Happy days. Okay, so there we go, we're fully set up there now. So everything is good, square, parallel, and true, and that's what we want. Now, it's not a case here of one and done. That's something you need to check regularly with your bandsaw. Believe me, there's nothing worse when you go to start a project or you're halfway through a project, you make a cut and it's tracked off or something's off and when you test it, it's not square and you just ruin the piece that you're working on and all for the sake of a little bit of adjustment. These things do get out of whack, miter saws, band saws, table saws, everything gets slightly out of whack and needs a little bit of fine tuning every now and again. So it's definitely worth checking. And I always have a little engineer square with you just to check that you're actually square every time you go to make a cut. It's a good habit to get into. That way you reduce any mistakes and any hair pulling exercises. Now, let's give this thing a quick run and then we'll do a test cut and we'll see where we're at. Okay, we're plugged back in, safety goggles on, just gonna give it its initial run, just to make sure nothing is um, caught or anything like that, and that the blade is good and nothing comes flying off the new blade because we haven't tried it out yet. So we'll just give it a quick run, and that's why safety goggles all the time. That all seems to be pretty good. Let's check how it's tracking. Let's have a look at the bearings, make sure nothing is touching. That's all good. Check the lower ones. And that's all happy days. Okay, so we are now ready to make our test cut. Let's do that. Okay, let's get on with our test cut. I have a piece of square sapili stock. I'm gonna try and rip this in half and then we'll measure all four corners of the piece that comes off against the side of our fence. Now, one thing I did forget to check and that was exactly how square my fence is. And uh, that's pretty back on, so we've no adjustments to do there. So another just important little check that I forgot to do. Now I've lowered my bearings as low down as they're going to go. I want to use the high fence rather than the shallow fence on this, because I want to keep it pressed against the fence as much as I can. Ordinarily, you want to get these bearings top and bottom as close together as you can to stop any deviation in that blade. That's as close as I can get. So like I said, we'll split this roughly down the middle and we'll see what results we're left with. Let's do it. Okay, let's test the results of our hard work. Now I'm using my really cheap calipers here. 
but it should give us an idea of where we are. So there's a side that was against the fence. That's a nice, shiny, smooth side. Here's the cut side. Now that's not bad for a four TPI blade. That is pretty good. That's a pretty nice um, result on that. And it's a slow feed rate. So if you feed it through nice and slow, even though the blade was under no pressure, um, you get a pretty good finish. So what we're gonna check this now is front to back to see how parallel our fence was. So let's see if we close that down. But 10.54 millimeters, 10.5554, if you guys can see that. Let's check the other side. And that is yeah, about 10.53. So a hundredth of a millimeter in it, according to my really cheap calipers. Now that's pretty bang on. I mean, that's as straight as straight can be. Now let's check top to bottom. So that's to say 10.53 there. Let's check the other side. So we're testing for square now. Okay, so we're a little bit less on this side. So that's 10.44. So we are about, what did I say? Five, three, five, four, six. So about nine hundredths of a millimeter off square. Still not too bad. What about this end? If I go here, 10.55 there and then here almost the same. So we ran a little bit off square as we were finishing out the cut, just an absolute fraction. That's almost negligible, I would have to say. And you would be finishing up this anyway, you would be leaving it like that. So you would take that little discrepancy out of it. And like I say, it's only a couple of hundredths of a millimeter, which is absolutely nothing. So I'm pretty happy with that. That bandsaw is pretty set up. It's gonna do exactly what I needed to do, which is cut pieces just like this for making little boxes and things. Happy days. Okay, so we're cutting square and true now. So just a little finishing touch, some machine wax just for the tabletop, um, just to help protect against rust. And it will also lubricate the tabletop so that everything will slide nicely over it. And we have reduced the friction. And that's it. That is our bandsaw all set up and ready to go. Happy days. Okay guys, so there we go, one fully set up bandsaw and hopefully you've enjoyed that video and hopefully you've got some good information out of it and hopefully it helps you up on your bandsaw journey. So any questions as always, make sure you get in the comment section and leave them there. I try to get back to everybody if I can. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up and if you're new here, think about hitting the subscribe button. Thanks as always to everybody over on Patreon who continue to support the channel. That's very much appreciated guys. Links to everything as always are below. Now I'm gonna get out of here. It's time for a cold beer in this warm, beautiful weather and it's very hot in this workshop so i'll see you in the next one guys take it easy so one thumb facing up one thumb facing down and just twist your hands in the opposite directions 